and he has also qualified net csir exam and uh, he is a physics teacher with a extensive 26 plus year experience after completing his pg post graduate from iit roorkee he has research experience from iit delhi and hong kong university of science and technology he has published 40 plus apps on google play store and he is an author of 18 books he is an evangelist for mit apple app inventor to scratch block based coding and use of ai in education author of 10 plus html javascript simulations he's an author of net anytimeteacher.com which is a free portal for physics and a winner of rockstar teaching award visionary teacher award acharya devo bhav award and school leader of the year award he is a life Empowerment Award. He has also obtained Life Empowerment Award and Dr. S. Radhakrishnan Memorial National Teachers Award and other awards and recognitions. He's a second prize winner of National Competition in Computational Physics and a speaker at various conferences and workshops and as well as resource person under also including under Professor H. C. Verma and IAPT. We welcome such an inspiring educator. And today I invite, I take this pleasure in inviting Dr. Tyagi for today's much awaited talk on quantum algorithms. Over to you, Dr. Tyagi. Thank you so much, ma'am. This is the <clears throat> ninth session in this special program, special drive that IAPT has initiated. Uh, and I'm very much honored and very much pleased to be associated with this program. So this uh, session nine, tomorrow we'll have a closing session, summarizing session. So technically, this is the last uh, talk about the content on uh, quantum computing. And uh, through this program, IAPT has been, uh, say, has envisioned uh, to reach out to school students something which impressed me a lot because quantum is very, very weird at school level. It's even more weird. Uh, so this session is on quantum algorithms. And uh, one algorithm that we are going to talk about has a very tough name, uh, especially for people like me. Now, how do you read this? So you start reading it, Dush, even if you are able to put T silent, Dush, Josa. By the way, it's Doish. So, but then you read it, Dush, Josa, and I had to take this name so many times this evening that I have a way out. One, one way out is a non-offending way of easy, say, making it easy to take the name. And that is, I take the first initial and I call it DJ algorithm. So it's easy to call DJ algorithm. The second one, which might offend some, but I request you to take it playfully. Replace a D with the J and J with the D and you have a juice dosa algorithm. So whichever you like, uh, jokes apart, <laughs> the, in brief, the session today uh, will talk about the problem statement uh, of this DJ algorithm. We'll see its classical and quantum solution. And then we'll spend time, significant time, in why it works, how it works, Physically, what all you do, mathematically, what all you do with all those uh, matrices, operations, all those kind of things. And then how do you make it work using uh, uh, in quantum circuits using quantum gates? We'll spend significant time, major part on that. Primarily, the message for today's session is that this new way of thinking, quantum superposition, all those type of things, it actually works. It works differently but it works. Why I need to say this? Because you would have come across one common statement that all this superposition and so many say states are possible, that happens only while it is in superposition. Ultimately, when you measure, when things are of some value to you, it uh, collapses into, say, one of the two uh, definite classical states. So then what's the point? How do you use it? So that's what we are going to learn today, that it works. That even while the coin is flipping, it is in air, it is flipping, you can do things. 
And when it comes down and it lands head or tail, you get something out of that process which has happened earlier. Now, once you start feeling it, understanding is a different word. If you start feeling it, you get that feel that sometimes, you know, in dream, you see a, something which is very realistic. But then when you get up, suppose you find that coin in your hand, you know, something that you are seeing in the uh, dream. And you are all of a sudden, you are, you know, you find something very weird has happened. What is it? I thought it was a dream, but then something is there in my hand. It's that much weird. It's, it, it sounds that much weird. So that's what we are going to learn, uh, that this new system of thinking, it works. It works. So we'll take one problem, we'll solve that problem using this DJ algorithm and uh, any matter that is related to understanding, this prime understanding, uh, I will take it up, which means if there is a question asked in between and I feel that if I do not answer this question, then your understanding, further understanding will be affected, I will take that question. I'll stop in between, I'll take that question. This session is targeted for beginners and especially at school level. So at certain points you will see, I have simplified certain things to the level of a school child. Uh, say for example, if I say zero changes to one, one changes to say, and so don't get that feeling that now it is no more a normalized state. I will come and I'll settle that also. But I simplified it so that the basic message about the quantum way of solving problems, it works, that message goes through. So the, uh, this will set up the content for this session, the contents primarily, the, we will state a problem and we will have an overview of the solution, the classical solution and the quantum solution. And then that dreadful word in academics, you will, will evaluate whether I'm able to communicate to you or not. Then we'll have a single qubit solution using the beam splitters, which Jyoti ma'am covered in session three, will revisit that uh, Max Zender interferometer and all those matrices that other of my worthy colleagues have been taking from time to time, especially Vandana ma'am took it so beautifully on Monday and then Kiran sir has been taking for the last two days. We'll see that all that superposition interference, then we'll place a phase shifter in between and see, and believe me, I'll, I will make it simple. I have, I have worked, I have worked on that part, making it simple to the extent that a school child can understand, don't worry about that part, that I will ensure that you find it easy. But then we'll have a quiz. And then we will see the typical DJ uh, algorithm, which is given in the books, and how it is realized, say, it is made to work using quantum gate circuit. And then we'll have a small quiz. And then we will have a little bit of homework. Homework will be primarily based on things which I leave out. Say, for example, if, I, if the derivation has two parts and similar part, and if I derive one part and I say similarly, and I use the result of the second part, I'll give that full derivation of the second part to you. So homework will be easy. Don't worry about that. And before we leave for our homes, we will have a final closing quiz, um, which you will have to submit for your uh, certification. So algorithm, a word about algorithm, that it's a set of rules to be followed in calculations or problem solving operation. And uh, in uh, classical computers, it is executed using logic gates. I'm sure you can find better definitions of it on, on Google. Quantum algorithm should be something similar, but then it, it uses something which is essentially quantum in nature. And quantum in nature by me, superposition, entanglement, and the measurement which results in the collapse of the wavefront. See, typically these three things are typically quantum. That superposition, entanglement, and the measurement which happens at the end, um, which collapses the wave function. Something typically quantum should be there, so you call it quantum algorithm. So in quantum computation, we primarily have some input qubits. Those qubits are acted upon by quantum gates in a quantum circuit, and it terminates with a measurement. With this, I come to the main part of uh, my, say, we need a different problem today, which can be stated in a way that quantum phenomena can be applied. In this case, superposition or measurement, and we, we need to have a different set of problem. And remember, it's only in superposition that a qubit is different from bits. Otherwise, a qubit also has value zero or one 
those uh, definite classical states, it has zero and one. But then the amazing part of that qubit is it can have combinations of those zero and ones, so then which happens in superposition. So the work should get over before that superposition state collapses. So with that, I come to the statement, the key problem of this session that we will solve using that DJ algorithm. So we have a single qubit. Single qubit means like you have one bit. The bit can have two values, zero and one. We have a single qubit and its definite classical states are zero and one. When it falls back to measurement, either zero or one. Now, some function acts on this qubit, some function at one. So this, because this qubit can have a value zero or one, so the function can leave zero as such or change zero to one. Or it can do the other way around. Say it leaves zero as such, F1 and F2 are doing it, or it changes zero to one, which F3 and F4 are doing it. Another possible state, another possible value for that qubit is one. Now it can keep one as such, which F2 and F4 are keeping, or it can change one into zero, which F1 and F3 are keeping. So you see, there are only, for a single qubit, there are only four options that you can have functions of four types. One is this type. Say it leaves a zero as such and changes one also to zero so that both the outputs are same which is zero. This is one function that you can have. It leaves zero as such, changes one also to zero, so the output is same, and that same value is zero. Or it leaves one as such, and changes zero also into one, so that the output is again the same, and that, which is one. This is one set of functions that we have. Another one, either it keeps zero as such and one as such. Or if it changes zero to one, then it also changes one into zero so that you have a balanced output. You have equal number of zeros and ones. Equal number of zeros is applicable when you have more number of outputs. Equal number of zero and one, these are balanced functions. Now listen to it once again. A balanced function will give you Half of the results will be zero, half of them will be one. But a constant function will give same outputs, whether it is zero or it is one, the same output. So we have two types of functions, constant functions, balanced functions. The question for which we are seeking the answer today is, if you are given a function out of these four, if you are given a function, is the given function constant or balance? That's the question that we want to solve. Very simple, very basic fundamental type of thing. But then you will be able to see quantum mechanics at work through this question. Now, note one thing. Before you start answering, note one thing. There is a superfluous knowledge that we don't need. The question is, out of these four, which function is constant? Which function is balance? Now, these two are balanced. But then you see there is an additional information. This is balanced because zero was kept at zero and one was kept as one. This is also balanced. If it changed zero to one, it also changed one into zero. Now this additional information, what the function did to zero and what it did to one is not required. Do you see the question is, is the function constant or balanced? Means is it giving equal number of ones and zeros or is it giving the same output? The question is this. But what we have the information in this table is what it did to zero and what it did to one. But I don't need that information. Now, what if you say, no, sir, you might not be needing that information, but I need it. In that case, you find another problem to solve. Th then this is not the ideal problem to solve using uh, DJ. So are you getting it? The problem we are restricting ourselves to is out of these four, you have to tell which function is constant, which function is uh, uh, say, uh, uh, constant, which function is balanced. Not what is it doing to zero and what is it doing to one? Is it balanced because of this 
or is it balanced because of this? That's not being asked. Now, how do you solve it classically? The classical solution to this question is you give the input zero, find what is f of zero. Let's say that is a. You have made one measurement. Now give the input one. Find what is f of one. Let's say that is b. You have made this second measurement. And now you check, is a equal to b? That will define whether the function is constant or balanced. If a and b are equal, then it is a constant function. If a and b are not equal, then it is a balance. No, 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 listen. How many measurements you made? You made two measurements to give this answer. What if instead of giving zero or one, we give the function a combination of zero and one? And you know what I'm talking about, you know, the superposition state. So the advantage that you have with a qubit, so say you have a single qubit and its state is given by this. Now, before I move further, let's check. Is it even a valid state or not? So what is it? This is, you can write this as one upon root two, this zero, one upon root two, one. If you square this, which comes along with state zero, if you square it, it gives a probability of this, uh, uh, say, particle, photon, whatever you have used, to be found in the state zero. So square it. What do you get? One by two. You square this. What do you get? One by two. The total should be one. Yes, it's an acceptable state. It can be in, the, in this state. So if I give something like this to the function, and I ask, what are you doing with it? Now, Think, think of it. And if you don't understand, ask me, because this is crucial. That you, when will this qubit not change? When will this qubit not change? Now, if f of 0 becomes 1, f of 1 becomes 0, you are again getting the same qubit. Or if 0 is left as such, 1 is left as such, again you are getting the same qubit. So your qubit is not changed if the function is a balanced function. But if zero is kept as such and one is changed to zero, or one is kept as such and zero is changed to one, then you get same, then you don't get this qubit. The qubit has changed. So what is it which changes the qubit? The constant functions are changing the qubit and the balanced functions are not changing the qubit. So if you measure the state of the qubit, one measurement, you will get that answer. Instead of two steps, two measurements, you get that answer from one. And that's what we are going to learn, say, today, how to do it. Now, we have covered up a little bit. I have spoken a little bit. I want to give you also a break from my voice. What we'll do is, just based on these things that we have introduced, we will have a short quiz and so that I know that I'm able to communicate to you. So I'm posting the in the chat I am posting this link. Kindly go to this, click on this link and answer those simple questions. And I will share with you the responses that we are getting. Once we get around, say, how many people are there? It shows 72 minus some people. So around, say, let's say. So even if you are crossing, say, 40, 45 people, I'll show you the answers. Kindly click on it. In the meantime, I'll see how many responses we are getting. Yeah. So it's a simple quiz. Achha, but purposefully, the quiz has been kept anonymous at this stage. The last quiz that you will take will, will have your name. But these quizzes which we take during the session, these are anonymous so that you feel free to try. You feel, you know, you have the freedom to commit mistakes. That's OK. So we have got one response. Two, okay, responses have started coming now. <clears throat> Good score so far. Okay, average score 4.25, four. I got nine responses so far, 10. We will look at the question-wise response once I get, once I cross this above 40 type. Okay, 24, 26, 27, 
feel free to answer. Nobody knows what answer you have given, but you will know whether you are understanding it right or not. Okay, 30 responses so far. Around 70% people are scoring. Okay, okay, okay. See, someone has got zero also. Doesn't matter. Nobody knows who has got the zero. Nobody, including me, nobody knows. Feel free to commit mistakes. Okay. So we have crossed the halfway mark. And so now we'll go to question-wise response. Other people can keep responding. But then we'll move to question-wise response. The first one, the question number one. Okay, let me take this summary from here. I'll take it from here. This one sounds a little bit better. So correct responses. 87% of the people gave correct response to the first one, which of the following is a constant function. So around 88% people were able to identify the constant function correctly. Which of the following is a balance function? Same 80%, 81% people were able to find which one is a balance function. If you run the classical algorithm and see that F0 is 1, could you tell whether the function is constant or balance? No. Because F1 can be 0, can be 1, so it can give you constant or balance, you can't say. Just by knowing one value, you can't say. And so there were more people committing error here. The superposition state of a qubit is given by this. A balance function f acting upon it will change the state of the qubit. See a balance function, what it will do? Change 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. Or will keep 0 as such, 1 as such. So it will not change. So, uh, but then a lot of people got stumped on this question. Okay, superposition state of a qubit is given by this. A constant function upon it will change the state of the qubit. What is constant function? It will either make both of them 0 or both of them 1. It will change the state. But then this is one question. These are the type of the questions that you found difficult to answer. So let me cover it up once again, briefly give you the, this thing. A, a balance function will change 0 to 1 and 1 to 0. You again have the same qubit. Or it keeps 0 as such, 1 as such, you have the same qubit. A balance function does not change the qubit. But a constant function will make either both of them 0 or both of them 1. So a constant function changes the qubit. And that's one measurement you have to make that you have to just see whether the state of the qubit has changed or not. That's what you have to see and you will be able to make out whether it's a constant function or not. So 50 responses we got, but there are 72 people in the group other than me. So there are 22 people who did not respond. Uh, okay, okay, no problem, no problem. Let's get back to the, uh, let's get back to the presentation. Okay, so let's move on to the second part now. We are revisiting that Mac Zender interferometer, which Jyoti Ma'am presented on day three. But today we are going to use more features of that Mac Zender and we need to understand it a little bit more deeply. So I'll share with you a few links for that Mac Zender. Some of them have already been shared with you. The, all these links are little different in their own way. They are a little bit different. So first one, First one, if you click this one, you click this one first. I'll I'll take you through like how to use or what you are what you are seeing there. So this is the first one that you will see. If you click the link that I have shared in the chat um, chat box, this is what you will see. Move to controls. Move to these controls, and this is what you will see. And click on the, I'll have to stop share because this, or what I'll do is I'll make this one little in so that otherwise I'm, I won't be able to. Just a second. Because those controls, they get, they get, they get hidden uh, under this. Yeah, now I can see these little more. Uh, okay, okay, now it makes my work a little easier. Okay, so this is the one that you will see in link one. Now, uh, right now, if you fire photon, 
you can click on these things show theoretical probabilities so the photon will either be reflected or be transmitted and this is that 50 percent 50 percent the beam splitter so you have a chance of 50 percent here 50 percent here in terms of light you say half of the intensity goes this side transmitted half of the intensity of light is reflected in terms of photon you have half probability of it being reflected half of the probability that it is being transmitted you get this 50 percent 50 percent show quantum state so this is the state that the photon was in when it was fired when it was made incident on the beam splitter and um, after it is fired we'll come to this thing this we'll see we'll come to this thing and you can click on this show matrix representations of optical elements so there is one optical element here, the beam splitter, and the matrix related to this beam splitter is this. Here you can put some in. Uh, someone is asking something. Okay, what you can do is you can put mirrors here. So just put mirrors, don't put the second beam splitter. Now with the mirrors, that this photon, which it was going like this, or say in terms of light, if you say classical light, it was going, it gets reflected. And now instead of going here in this detector, it goes in this detector. And this one gets reflected, it goes into detector one. But you see something here. See, these two, let me remove the mirrors. This one and this one are more or less identical. They are similar. Only difference right now, the transmitted part was being detected by detector one, the reflected part by D2. If you insert mirror, this transmitted part is detected by D2. This reflected part is detected by D1, but same 50%, 50% probability. You see something here. We'll talk about it. What is being done? If there is no beam splitter, only mirrors have been added what has been done we will come and we will discuss it back we'll come come back to this thing you can insert the second beam splitter here and this is something that uh, was discussed in session three and now you have a hundred percent possibility probability of getting this uh, d1 activated and this d2 will not get any photo now i'm sharing with you the second link now that has there you can play around with phase shifters so in the chat box, I'm sending you another link. Now click on this. This one is little different, little different. Click on this control, this one. Click on this control. And here you get this thing, insert phase shifters. Uh, this one is different because all these things are fixed. You can't change this, but you can only the thing you can play around is you can insert phase shifters. Phase shifters are primarily glass slabs and uh, they make that wave wave to travel longer distances. And so the relative phase of these two parts, it changes. That's how it changes phase shifters. And here you have the option of inserting a phase shifter of pi 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So visually, they are showing it by a thicker slab, thicker slab, thicker slab, that kind of thing. I'm putting it back to pi and clicking on this thing. Show theoretical probability. You know, it's coming because of the beam splitter and because of this phase shifter also now. We'll, 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 we'll discuss it more. Just first, just understand the environment that we are going to talk about. Show quantum state, it will show the quantum state of the photon at various points. We will come to this also. What are all these things? And show matrix representations of optical elements. Click on all these things. So this is a beam splitter one, matrix for that. Beam splitter two, matrix for that. And this is a phase shifter and this is the matrix for that. And we'll have a simplified version of this term also. Don't worry about that. Uh, so you have these two, max gender interferometers, which we'll study. By the way, this, these are from QVIS, quantum visualization. This is this university. I'm sending you that link also. B because it's a, if you increase the number of system of beam splitters and mirrors, n times, where n tends to infinity due to light, I want the probability for both the detectors be zero. Ultimately, it has to be at one. It, it has to be ultimately, when you measure it, it has to be either one or zero. That's a one of the state. Now I'm sending you one more link. This is a link uh, where all their simulations are kept. 
you can play around with as many of them all all free resources you whatever you find convenient comfortable i have played with some of them so these are the max ender interferometers that we are going to use now please pick up paper pen and to motivate you that you write i will write with you on the screen so we start with this thing let because you might have kept videos these on your right side so those who will watch the recording on youtube they will see some kind of blank here but in zoom live meeting this part is covered by all those uh, uh, videos so i have moved it a little bit left so this superposition state we will see how beam splitter uh, say creates those superposition state in maxender interferometer this is the apparatus this apparatus looks very much like uh, michelson morley apparatus which graduation and post graduation students might be knowing school students would have never heard about it uh, one of the most popular failed experiments it wanted to detect that ether the failure of that ether was revolutionary that the experiment failed to detect ether and and they got nobel prize for a, for failure to detect ether uh, one of the most popular failures sorry so this is the apparatus in that apparatus one of the part is beam splitter and the one we have been talking about it has two beam splitters one being used to create superposition another for interference that that purpose in quantum circuit the same thing is done by hadamard gate and we'll see that also and mathematically you multiply by the matrix of this beam splitter and you get those superposition state don't worry we will do it we will actually do it so let's start doing something start writing something we have this case of a beam splitter which reflects 50% of the light and which transmits 50% of the light listen to the case properly beam splitter splitting reflecting 50% transmitting 50% okay if i call the transmitted part as a state 0 and i call the reflected part as state 1 don't worry about it it's actually you can you can choose the other way around it doesn't matter so much at least in for this session it doesn't matter at all if i call this state as 0 and this state as 1 and if both the paths are taken with 50% probability what ensures this this thing half reflection half transmission in terms of photon you will say there is a 50% probability of being reflected 50% of it getting transmitted how do you represent that state 50 50 wala type it goes to state 0 50% it goes to the reflected part 50% so how do you write that now the transmitted part i am writing as state 0 what is the probability 50% so what should come in front of it the square of that thing whatever you write here the square of that thing should be 1 by 2 so what do you write here 1 upon root 2 the square of it is 1 by 2 this is state 1 50% what do you write here so what is the state of the photon after it has hit the beam splitter the state is 1 upon root 2 and 1 upon root 2 i hope this part is by now you are getting easy with it so you can write the state of the photon after it has say it has struck the beam splitter one you can write it even even from your knowledge someone has responded in the chat okay 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 uh okay now this part okay this part is okay okay now how do we get this how do we get this for that we will have to go and study max zender little bit more and i'll study it started in a general manner uh like this move it little bit here so that i can see this end okay 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 now it's okay now if you feel that i got a ready made um, thing here for me i can start with a blank state also i have kept one blank i can use that uh, let me motivate you by using something like this so that you don't feel ki i started with something on my plate so very easy to make something look like a beam splitter and right now i need not worry about which side is dielectric which side is glass uh we, we we will handle that don't worry about that part 
whichever side. But then, from so the photon can strike it from above. The photon can strike it from below. Uh, 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 it's it's my bad uh, drawing. Uh, photon will not have this kind of path. Better I correct my mistake before somebody gets this idea. Ki photon nasta hai. Okay. Now say this photon coming from above, it can get reflected. It can be transmitted. Then you have those mirrors. Easy to draw those mirrors. And then from here, it reflects, it reflects. And I'll talk about the second beam splitter later. We have a lot of things to learn before that. Same thing can happen to this photon, which is from the lower left corner. A photon can come from this side also. It can get transmitted. It can get reflected. Now we saw this part. A photon coming, photon coming, and, and we wrote that state. Now, uh, and anything that you don't understand, ask me, because these are fundamental things, and I'm willing to spend more time um, uh, to clarify. Say, the state that a photon takes this upper path, the state that the photon takes upper path, if I write that with this, and what is it? You know, this is a zero state. And the state that the photon takes the lower path, if I write it with this, so what is it? This is one. You know? This is zero. This is one. You know, if the photon was coming from here, and same, same thing I can write here also. If it takes the upper path, upper path, you write it like this here. You write it like this here. And you will see that in that Max Zander, which I shared with you, he has started with this thing. So if the photon is taking the lower path, you write 0, 1, 1, 0. If you start with this, just now you did that exercise. What, is, what will come here? This. What will come here? This. So what is the state of the photon at this? When it, say from left to right, it is moving. When it has reached these things, this point, when it has reached this point, what is the state that the photon will be found in? 1 upon root 2, 1, 0, plus 0, 1. This is the state of the photon if it has crossed this one. Because it was having 50%, 50% possibility, and this state you were able to write even directly, even without any other end. But then, on the left, the photon might have come from here, might have come from here. If it comes from here, you wrote this. If it comes from here and 50%, 50% reflection, and uh, say reflection is 50%, transmission is 50%, these one by root two, one by root two must remain. That's our common sense that we have developed now. If it is getting reflected 50%, transmitted, this should be one by root two, one by root two. But then there will be some phase difference. Why? This one, when it gets transmitted, there is no change of phase. But this one, when it gets reflected, oh, 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 this you might not be seeing. Say so this one, when it gets reflected, has a phase change of pi. And when it gets transmitted, it does not have any phase change. But then when it comes, when the photon comes from above, then this one has a phase change of pi. And this one has no phase change. So when you wrote this photon after it has crossed beam splitter and you wrote it like this, now, when you write the state of this photon, when it crosses this one, these parts should be the same. One by root two, one by root two, because the probability of being found on this path is 50%. Probability of being found on this path is also 50%. But it cannot be exactly the same because the phases are different. And now you will remember Vanda Luthra ma'am and her session on Monday. Like, And I really like that session a lot. Now you will realize it. what was changing the phase, what... Now oh, those beautiful, those those uh, arrows which were rotating all around the globe. Now you will start remembering it that what, which gate does it in electronics something. But yeah, I'll, I'll cover that. The problem is, what about left of this beam splitter? Here I know one by root two, one by root two, because whichever photon you take, it has 50-50 chance. This one is easy. What about this? If it is coming from here, then only this is there, this is not there. If it is coming from above, only this is there, this is not there. In general, in general, what you do is 
you write this state as like this. Say if this has alpha here and beta here, if this photon has been fired, then beta square is one. If this photon has been fired, then alpha square is one and beta is zero. Are you getting it? In general, it's written like this. Uh, let me let me make this thing a little bit more clear. See, this, this alpha beta is the same as you write as it's the sum of this, which is the same as alpha multiplied by this and beta multiplied by this, which is the same as alpha zero, beta one and that's what we that's how we write you know those uh, uh, the, those superposition states in general alpha beta so if you want to find the probability of finding being found in zero state is alpha square probability of being found in state one beta square those kind of things so this is this this version allows you those matrix multiplication much faster these are the states uh, we'll see the advantage of various uh, no, the various approaches so we are writing the stage here if this photon is being fired once again beta square is one alpha is zero if this photon is being fired alpha square is one beta is zero now it comes to this point now what happens here till this point am i am i okay till this point now what has the beam splitter done the first part, what has the beams, beam splitter one, what has it done? So let me change the color now. This is the beam splitter one. The matrix for beam splitter one is one upon root two minus one, 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 one. This is the matrix for beam splitter one. This is the photon that we have taken, means beta square is equal to one. Alpha square is equal to zero. This is a photon that we have started with. That's the Max Zander we have shared with you, the link that I shared. When this matrix X upon this one, what do you get? You get one upon root two. This is zero. This is one. Now this is zero. This is one, which can be written as one upon root two, one zero plus zero one which is one upon root two, zero and one. So you see that the state which you were writing from your intuition, let's say 50, 50%, that's what this beam splitter has done. It has created this state, which we had already written here by saying 50%, 50%, we had already written. This is what this beam splitter is doing. And mathematically, how you get this state, you write the uh, you write the matrix for this beam splitter. It operates on that state and it creates this space, which is your superposition state. So now, when the photon has reached here after passing through beam splitter, this is what you are having. Now it strikes the mirror. Let's go back to the one that I shared with you. Uh, is this the one? No. Oh, oh, it is having so much of ego. Acha. So this is the one. Now let me remove the second beam splitter. Now, do you identify this thing? After mirrors have been put up, see, this is the state that you got from beam splitter one. Now, after it strikes a mirror, do you recognize this gate from Monday session? Acha. I think most of the people know. Uh, no, I'm looking for this answer. This is a very popular one. Are you able to recognize what is it doing? Ah. I teach some students, J means previous year questions. And when I ask questions, this is a usual thing that happens. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I said, oh, sorry, you are answering in the chat. Good, very nice. Ah, so yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's very right. Very right. Now see what is happening. Now please understand it. See here what the mirrors have done. This one changes, this one changes zero to one and one to zero. 
this is your x gate equivalent to the not it changes 0 to 1 1 to 0 now this one was remember this what was it uh, going back to this one what was this state 0 so it has changed 0 to 1 1 to 0 but then this whole state doesn't change this it has primarily flipped it has primarily flipped those two rays so what was going this side is actually it comes here and it goes from here it again goes to d1 that's where i was saying it is still in the same phase that what so these mirrors have flipped the uh, the beams and say by change this state is now if i means if i draw it here if i write the same thing here if i say what is the state this has changed to 1 upon root 2 0 1 this has changed to 1 upon root 2 1 0 yeah, overall state is still the same. That doesn't change. Now, when it comes to beam splitter 2, and we are very close to this, this discussion part, and then we'll put up this thing and we'll see how that uh, DJ comes into picture. This beam splitter 2 has this matrix 1, 1, 1, minus 1. And what is the state here? What is the state here? How do you write this state? You write it like either like this or or what, how do you write it? One upon root two. The shorter version is this. Uh, same same thing like this one. This alpha beta you wrote like this. You write it like this. So give this state to beam splitter to work upon one upon root two, one, one. And what do you get? You get one by two. This is one, one. This is a two. And this is one. This is minus one. This is zero. And so you are getting one, zero. So this Mag Zender interferometer right now with no phase shift something, what is it doing is if it goes in like this, out will come is one zero. This state will come out. Now, no, no, a few questions that might come into your mind because they came into my mind also initially. Why to have all this kind of thing? Why not? I said, do you recognize this one? Beam splitter two. Do you recognize this gate? I remember ma'am talked about it. The popular one, anyone who remembers this gate? Some people are answering in the chat. Let me check. Yes, not X. H, Hadamard, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very right, very right. No, so I thought, see, this, I said, why not? Because Hadamard gate creates superposition states. Why not put that Hadamard gate here also? Why to, you know, bend and twist the things like this thing. And this is one of the things that I like to give it to you as a homework. I can put, what, why this? Okay. I can put this same matrix here also. I can try putting it here also. And then I put it again here also, again the same. What should I get? If this was zero, 01 here, you will get zero, 01 here also. I say, why not then talk straight away so that children can understand and I can understand. And it's very easy to say that you start with zero one and nothing has happened. You are getting zero one outside. No. The thing is, if you see how these Max Zender interferometer is actually made and how they are placed and how that physically it is working, you have to set things in a way. And then you say this, this operation will be done if I modify this uh, matrix in this way that the first one will do this work and the second one will do this work okay it will result in this thing that zero one will result into one zero but okay that's the state that i get when there is nothing in between that if i start with zero one it comes to one zero now if i put a function which leaves it at one zero then it must be a balanced function but if it changes something like this thing if it changes this one zero to zero one then it must be a constant function. And that's what we'll be looking for by putting. So these things I have covered up. These things I have covered up. Yes, these I have mirrors I have covered up. Now, if I, by putting the phase shifter, this is what we'll be doing. That how that output qubit, the state of the output qubit, if it is changed or if it is not changed, that's what we'll be looking at. So now what we are doing is we are putting this phase shifter whose a uh, matrix is given by this. Now, those who are scared from complex numbers and all these things, I'll give you an easier version of this thing. Just a minute, let me change the color of the ink. I like red more. This thing which can scare some of us, e raised to the power, this is one. 
i pi actually it is how many pi that i'll discuss a, a little on this you can write as cos pi plus i sin pi now sin pi is zero so this thing is primarily minus 1 so this whole matrix you can write as 1 0 0 minus 1. this is what you can do, write it as so this phase shifter this phase shifter has to simplify things for you not all say but the two, this phase shifter has this as the matrix now once again this is a photon which is coming in this is the one and the state of this photon was 0, 1. Remember, it is coming from the lower path. This has beta, where beta square is equal to 1. This is the one. When you come here, the state of the photon, let me mark these points, A, B, and then you have these mirrors. These are the mirrors. M and M dash are the mirrors. At A, the state of the function is 1 upon root 2, 0, 1, 0, say 0, 1, 1, 0, whichever order, say, okay. This is a state here. Now, 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 what happens? B does not get affected because there is nothing here. Nothing here. But this one and this one is what? This one is what? To be found in the lower state, 0, 1, 1 upon root 2. This is what is here. Here. This one, when acted upon by this thing, let's do this, this operation. Let's, let's, let's work out on these two things. So this 1, 0, 0 minus 1 acts on 1 upon root 2, 0, 1. What do you get? What do you get? 1 upon root 2 is there already. 1 into 0, 0 into 1. So this is 0. 0 into 0, minus 1 into 1, minus 1. This is what you get here. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I am cancelling out the effect of these mirrors that we have already discussed. We have already talked about. I am cancelling out the effect. Say both of them, they create a phase difference of additional difference of pi. For the sake of simplicity, they have compensated. Or you can say this path is now starting from here. This path, say this path has gone here and this one has gone here. That's what we saw as the effect. That it basically interchanges that path. Now when you reach here, now, when you reach here, the uh, uh, the uh, one minus one, the matrix for this, and the state that you have here, the state that you have here is this state as such, one upon root two, one zero, and this one. So, what is the state here? One upon root two, one zero, minus zero one. Or in short, you can write 1 upon root 2, 1 minus 1. This is what you have, which will act on which this beam splitter will act. So I'm writing it here now. 1 upon root 2, 1 upon root 2, 1 minus 1. And now what am I getting now? Before this beam splitter, I was getting something else. What am I getting now? I am getting now 1 into 1, 1, 1 minus 1. This, this is 0. 1 into 1, 1, and the minus minus is plus, so this is 2. And this one, uh, oh, this root 2 of this one, this also. So what, this is 1 upon 2. So this becomes 0, 1. If there is any part that I need to... Now, earlier I was getting here. What I was getting here? 1, 0. Now, with this phase shifter being placed here, the qubit has changed. The qubit has changed. And if it has changed, I can make it out that what kind of function was there. Now, I want, I'm very much interested. I place it here. What about this? What about this? Because the function has to act on 0 and 1 both. So I'm a little bit running out of time. But then what I can say, I can ask you to do is, the state of the photon is 1 upon root 2, 1, 0 here. Kindly pass it through this one. And you will see it has no effect on 0. The 0 state remains 0 state. So I can put this here also. So F0, F1, both are being acted upon together. It does not affect F0. You try it out. So what I'll do is I'll change the color so that you know what is to be tried out. Uh, color. Badiasa color. Green, green. Yeah, this green, let me see. Ah. So what you can do is 
that this uh, phase shifter, phase shifter 1, 0, 0, minus 1, x upon 1 upon root 2, 1, 0. And you kindly check that there is no effect. No effect. So 0 remained unaffected. 1 was affected and changed to something. Changed to something. Some phase change was there. And it resulted in the change of the qubit. It is able to catch that the function is of a particular kind. Yeah, that was a constant one. It leaves one that that zero was left un, unaffected, and one uh, one was changed to zero, both values, and it has changed the value of this output, uh, this out output qubit. Now, before I move further ahead, this is for practice. That's all homework, homework type. Quickly, let's have a small quiz on this thing that we have covered so far. Quick, small, short quiz, so that I know that we are. On the same page, we are understanding each other. There's a quiz that I have posted. Uh, Tyagi, sir, uh, one yes. submission, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please, 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 sir. please share the link in WhatsApp group. Some senior professors are also participating in the oh, quiz. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'm it's so possible happy. now. So otherwise, happy. Yeah, 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 right now it is possible. We right. can post uh, after the program, after the session. After the session, I can post it even now. Okay. Which one? Q. Which group the, uh, you are mentioning? Q. Uh, QC. 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 There are two Qs. So there is QC one. C one. QC yeah, yeah. C one. Right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. 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 So I am posting this latest one. I am posting it there. And I'll come back to sharing the screen so that I can share with you the response of the people. Okay, four responses I've already got. Five. Uh, okay, 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 okay. The average score in 12 is 1.33 out of three. So, I hope you won't mind because I tried it out with some, because I have access to school students, that this material takes little time to grasp. Yeah, see the score has fallen down further now. Good. But yeah, keep responding because your response gives us, gives me the feedback that the material has to be, you know, softened even more so that everybody understands it. Oh, and in between, honestly, in between, I was hurrying up thinking that because, you know, most of you are very good in this field, say already good in this field. But yeah, I'll, I'll take time. So I'll, I'll request you to give you give me five, 10 minutes extra today. But then I won't like to rush to hurry through with this content. Okay, so we have more than 40 responses. So now let me go to question wise response. Which of these will result a superposition state? Actually, all four will result in a superposition state. The last two would have confused you. And okay, I understand. I understand why you got confused. Because if you got confused with this, it means uh, you haven't programmed uh, with the text a matrix. So if you want to write like 1, 1, 1, minus 1. So you write 1, 1 like this, and you put a comma, and then you write 1, minus 1, the second row. Then you write the second row after the comma. So you see... This one is the BS1, <coughs> beam splitter 1, and this is beam splitter 2. And both of them, both of them can, uh, uh, can create that superposition state at a time. Any one of, of it, is, if it is used, it can create a superposition state. Yeah, I understand why these two are confused. That, that was actually a good part of the question. Huh? If photon incident from lower left is being represented by 1. The matrix for beam splitter 1 is shown in the question. It will result in a superposition state given by uh, most of the people, two thirds of the people were able to answer it correctly. The matrix representation of a phase shifter is shown. Which of these is true? And we saw it, uh, but then still half of the people got it right. That it affects the state one, but leaves the state zero unaffected. Yeah, because we did not work on zero, I just said that you try it out and you got a wrong answer. there. See, now you do this thing yourself now. 
you have the matrix representation of the phase shifter i'll go back to that part you have the matrix representation of the phase shifter this one where is it going this one this one you have the matrix representation of the phase shifter let it act on this part the photon probability of photon to be found on this path this path is this 1 upon root 2 1 0 this is what i started with and that's why i was taking so much of time like say what is the how do you write if the photon is on this path how do you write if the photon is taking this path and if there is 50% 50% probability how do you write that so this is that upper part upper path if the photon takes upper path let this phase shifter act on it and you will see there is no change so it does not affect zero it affects only one and that's why it was able to change the qubit if it changes 1 to 0 and 0 to 1 then it's a balance function in that case it will not affect that qubit and you will know that's how you will know by single measurement that it's a balance function now let's move a little bit ahead uh, uh i think we saw all the three questions we analyze all the three questions okay now moving ahead quantum algorithm there are categories you can find a better slide on the internet this i won't spend time on i'll spend time on something which we can do together all these things how you categorize quantum algorithms we have taken just one quantum algorithm and that also a very simple algorithm to so that we understand that how quantum mechanics work but then when you start working in the field of quantum uh, um, uh, say computation there are other algorithms that you should know and this is the one that we are talking about today in short we are calling it dj and you know why we are calling it dj because i have problem reading these names right from my childhood i used to find how to read it and i really wonder like how they get the name but then yeah they must be thinking the same thing about our names that how we get these names okay now the way dj algorithm is put in books and say books means using quantum gate in a quantum circuit how do you visualize it how do you realize it now one thing additional that you will have to learn uh, this one this was covered by kiran sir yesterday he was covering it up this sign this plus in a circle this is addition modulo 2 so addition modulo 2 means if these two things together are an even number you keep that number but if it becomes 2 you reset it to 0 so primarily the remainder after dividing by 2 that's what is addition modulo 2 to simplify it if you get 0 or 2 or 4 the answer will be 0 but if you get 1 3 5 7 etc something we will get only one don't worry about it if we get one you keep it as one if this is one this is one and it is coming out to be two reset it back to zero okay so that's what this modulo 2 means uh in short we call it mod 2 mod 2 uh, but this is addition modulo 2 addition modulo 2 now this function fx which you are trying to determine whether it is a constant function or is it a balanced function it is implemented by this which sounds very similar to the c not gate which sir kiran sir was sharing yesterday there it was only x and y and when you apply c not x is the one which will determine say what happens to this one um, okay i'll take that part later x remains as such and this y there it was y addition modulo 2 say mod 2 x y mod 2 x effectively what c not does is if this is zero then because x will be 0 so y is 1 so this term is 1 if y is 0 this is 0 if x is 1 x is 1 then 1 plus 1 will become 0 1 plus 0 will become 1 and you know? so primarily or say overall what c not gate does is if this x is 0 it keeps y as such but if x is 1 it flips y that's what that that gate was doing and uh, sir discussed it now here this this is called f modulated or f controlled c not gate this f is controlling it and the way this f function is implemented in these uh, quantum circuits is by this argument this one don't worry if i ask a question in quiz based on it i will give you this expression you need not mug it up for today but then you need to understand how it is being implemented for example for example if this x is 0 Oh, go back to that color which I like. 
I like that red color when I write. If this x is zero and this y is one, this is zero, so this will remain zero. Y one modulo two of f x, and if f x, see x is zero, so you need to find out what is f of zero. What is f of zero? Now here he says if if f of zero is one, then this one and this one will together become zero, and you will get the answer is this. Once again, you see it. Whenever I feel something should be understood, my simple way in my school in my classes that I say I'll I'll ask it in the test. Then all of a sudden, most of the time, students say, "Sir, what is the question? What are, what 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 are you trying to say?" And it works. Sometimes somehow it works. So I'm telling you the same thing. I'm going to ask you in the quiz. If say, how do you implement f x this function? If you have x and y as zero one. Just as an example, this is an example. You, if you have it zero one, you can have it one 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 zero. So if you have zero one, this zero remains as such. Y modulo two with f x. And if say this is also an example, just and if f zero is one, f zero can be zero also. But we, you will see, we will generalize it, generalize it, generalize, and we will get one result. So in between, mathematics will look. Frightening also. Don't worry. I'll bypass that. I'll bring you to the stage where you can understand the get the meaning out of this this algorithm. I'll bring you that. So this y is one, f zero he says is one, but then one and one modulo two when you say because one plus one becomes two, and two has to be reset to zero. So this the answer will come out to be is zero zero. So and this is the circuit which uh, implements it that uh, DJ algorithm. Now this gate, you know h, so you know instead of zero and one, what will be fed here? This zero will become. By now you might have understood that right? this zero is mapped to this one combination of zero and one, and this one is mapped to this is spin right and I spin right, and this is uh, zero and one. This one spin left, right and left, that kind of thing. So this zero is mapped to this. Uh, combination superposition of zero and one superposition of zero and one both of them have probability one by two one by two type of thing but then the phase is different spin right spin left so now what is being fed to this f are these two and let me take you a little bit into that mathematics if it is frightening don't worry i'll share this slide also with you now what you are having is this and this because that hadamard gate created the superposition of this bit and this qubit and now I have color coded it so that you don't get lost into where we are. This one by root two, one by root two here, which I have written here as one by two, zero, and this whole thing plus one into whole of this thing. Okay. And now you have to apply this function. And we spend a minute or two to understand it. So let's see. Let's see now. How do you do it? How do you do it? So this is x. This is x. And this is now y. So x remain as such. This these two together, I have written it here as one by two. This is this one by two. This x remains as such. And you see this x remains as such. And what is to be done with y? Y modulo mod two fx. Fx is what? F zero. Y y this is y. Modulo two with f zero, so you have zero and f zero mod two z minus one and f zero. So this, this and this goes here. This and this goes here. Are you getting it now? This one comes here, and likewise you are expanding this thing. This is a y. This is a y. So you get y first. You write y first. Right, y first, and that modulo with f of, and this this time x is one, so this is f of one. Why? Because x is one now. This side, this x is one now, right? This x is one. This one, and you get this term. So what what I'm uh, shake the law. Don't do it. Okay. So this is what we have got. On the previous page, don't feel frightened. We did it ourselves. You can see it. I did it myself. Though I have made lot of errors, 
But if you write it down, you can see that this can be easily done. Right? And I'm starting this page from here. And now I want you to understand something. F0 can be 0. F0 can be 1. This is something that you don't know. It is only in classical measurement you knew. But in quantum, you don't know these two. You knew well, that is it constant or is it balanced? But you don't know what is F0 and what. But it can be 0. It can be 0. It can be 1. If it is 0, if F0 is 0, then this 0 and 0 is 0. And this 1 and 0 is 1. And so you get this part, this part as 0 and minus 1. Likewise, if F0 is 1, if F0 is 1, then 0 and one, this, well, this thing, 0 and F0, 1, minus 1 into 1. So this is minus 0 here. This becomes 0. This is minus 0. This is 0 and 1, 1. So I have rewritten it. This minus sign I have written first. And this is, okay, okay. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. This I can write as minus 1 raised to the power 1 of 0 minus 1. Can you see it? Because minus 1 I am taking common. Here I can write minus 1 raised to the power 0, 0 minus 1. I have similar kind of thing. And what are these powers which are above? You see, these are the values of F0. So they can be written. We can combine all this thing together. For F0, we can combine it together. And it can be written like this. Minus 1 raised to the power F0. Of this thing, this is likewise, and you see, this is the homework. You try it out the same thing. If f1 is zero, if 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 f1 is zero, then what you can write it as. If f1 is one, then how do you can write it as, and how you can combine these two? I am writing the result here. This is something that I'll give you in the homework. And when you combine it, you get even more frightening kind of things. Ah, yeah. When you look at it in first go, it looks frightening. But then you see this 0 minus 1, take 1 upon root 2 from here. This is that one state, original wala. Remove that. Whatever is left, whatever is left, you put a Hadamard gate on it. Where is that circuit? You put a Hadamard gate over it. And, and, and you put a Hadamard gate over it. Implement this one. Throw away that this wala part. And then the second, but the remaining part, you put a Hadamard gate. And what you get is something which looks frightening but i can assure you i'll discuss it with you it is not at all let's see let's discuss this thing see this is after this is a qubit that you have to measure looks frightening i'm telling you but just give me a minute and i'll, I'll explain it to you if f0 and f1 are same if same same means either both are zero or both are one so you get, in both the cases, you get minus 1 raised to the power 0 or 2. In this case, this is 1. Are you getting this thing? This whole thing becomes, so 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 and 2 cancel out. So this state is 1 upon 2, 1 plus 1 of 0. So this cancels out. This is state 0 remains. If this is 1, this is 0, this minus 1 becomes 1, this cancels out. In the same situation, this one, uh, yeah, this, this bracket has to be a bigger bracket. Huh? If f0 and f1 both are 0, minus 1 raised to the power 0 is 1. So this cancels out, this is 0. If this are 1 and 1, same, they have to be same. If they are same and this is 2, then again this becomes plus 1. So this is again 0. So 1 goes off and only 0 remains. So if fx is constant, which means f0 and f1 are same, then this only zero other thing remains. The state reduces to zero. If fx is balanced, then the state is reduced to one. And by measuring only one qubit, you get that's that's what Max Zender, that that detector measures. And by detecting just one qubit, you can tell whether it is a constant function or it is a balanced function. There is an activity. I'll give you the link. This is a beautiful site, beautiful site, this label activity. I'll share it with you. Uh, and then we'll quickly go to a very short quiz, the third quiz. And uh, I'll share, in the meantime, I'll share this one. But first, you start trying this quiz. So, chat.
chat and here this is the quiz i'll stop sharing it and post it where madhusudan sir asked me to post it uh yeah okay so i posted it there also and also let me get that virtual lab you kindly try that quiz and i will try this link and i'll share it with you in the chat box first where is the chat box okay here it is share the screen okay this link i shared let's see how you are responding for the quiz oh by the way the second quiz got 77 responses now let's see how many responses we get in the third quiz 19 already and the even the score is better this time 22 responses so far 23 once we cross 40 we'll do that yeah better score this time let me see what was the final score in quiz 2 1.43 the first and there were 77 responses the first one got only 52 responses and the average score oh that average score was good it was 2/3 like 66 67% okay back to quiz 3 we have more than 40 responses so now let me show you which quantum gate is used to create the superposition state more so that people know it that ah uh, because we were talking so much about c not so people remembered the name okay to determine whether a function is balanced or constant classically you need to you need minimum of a measurements but with dj algorithm you can do so with b measurements a and b r uh quite a bit but then okay still more than 60% got it right you need two measurements in this dj algorithm you need two measurements classically but this dj algorithm can get you done in one classically two but dj algorithm one function fx is implemented as shown in the figure if f0 this was the question we did in the class and still 40% of the people ah this is something that we need to enjoy yeah mai kar kaha tha te quiz puchunga hai na i told you this thing we did this was a kind of the question where the teacher says on monday we are going to have a surprise test and still people are not prepared for that surprise <laughs> that's okay that's okay we all are learning nobody knows what answer you are given i told you they are kept anonymous for a purpose so that brings me to the homework okay listen homework what is it i said bs1 has one matrix bs2 has another matrix you put the same matrix bs2 wala that hadamard gate at one also and try out the whole thing and you put whatever you had at one you put it at two you will see it works theoretically it works problem is in making an interferometer with those plates and putting it at what side do you put it up that you get this combination problem comes there but as far as this session goes it doesn't matter so what you do is you try all those combinations other combinations that you can try is we tried the photon coming from down you try the photon from up and that's where you start understanding that what is happening at what stage what is happening at what stage i am quite sure that the organizers will now make that group uh, say you anybody can post and have discussions because now those technical sessions are over so that's discussion people will like to have that discussion in uh, in that group we will continue with that discussion there with this i thank you and i really thank you you know uh, 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 kulkarni sir for taking this initiative uh, for our president sir for you know for, for doing everything for, for this program to exist vandana ma'am who has coordinated and done lot of hard work and especially thank you for all those sessions that i attended i myself got a chance to learn you can send me message anytime you can be assured i can assure you i'll always reply to messages 
this is the exit quiz, overall quiz, where your names will be collected. Uh, so this is the last thing that I'm sharing with you. This is that exit quiz. I'll post, okay. Um, I'll post you in that group also. With this, I uh, hand over the mic back to Vandana ma'am and Madhu Sudan sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Dr. Tyagi, for the wonderful insight and making this topic, which otherwise is not that simple, understandable at this level. And uh, your, your insights about the balanced function and constant function and DJ algorithm, I would also call it as DJ algorithm. So in that uh, was cleared by your uh, in-between quizzes also. And in order to simplify or in order to consolidate on the topic quizzes, intermediate uh, quizzes, I think uh, tells that how much audience or how much participants have understood. And that also helps in further flow of the lecture also and uh, i really like the way you reconsolidated on the gates and the beam splitter and dr kiran's talk so in a way in nutshell majority of the previous talks were also reconsolidated in terms of their understanding of the pauli gates and hadamard gate and i'm very happy with the response of few people uh, dr krishna kumar yugen kulkarni uh, then it is Pooja, Salman Roy, Biju, Hemant, Baljeer, Bal and then again Salman Roy and uh, Tara, Akansha, Atul. They have been constantly answering, I, uh, and I'm sorry if I have missed few. I just noticed last two questions which you had asked about the gates. So that reconsolidation shows that how they are able to take an other as aspect of it. Like in the previous case, we worked on the IBM composer. Uh, IBM uh, quantum co composer. So that uh, representation was something different. We talked about probabilities, we talked about state vectors and the phases. And here you took an example from the beam splitter and with the help of the simulation. And in that the perspective was different, but consolidating on the same thing. So that is yes. the major important thing and uh, really thankful to you for that. And uh, with that, I, I, again, I, I say this is the ninth session and uh, the enthusiasm of the participants is amazing because till now we have got around 72 and prior to that we had uh, almost 90 participants every day, excluding 10 of us or 15 of us every day, 75 to 80 have attended and they have participated in the quizzes also. So I think uh, I think take take home messages that that uh, interest in the in the sustained interest has been there, and I am thankful to again Dr. Kulkarni, Professor Aluwalia, and all those who have taken part and has have given you know, given us this opportunity as well as have given the support also all kinds of support. So thank you so much, and our team that teamwork has been amazing the way we have been, I'll say, listening and trying to make the things as simple as possible. Uh, those things are very difficult in to some extent. So uh, nothing can be, I think, simpler than this. But still, we will always uh, make an endeavor to make it more simpler. So I hand it over with my thanks. I hand it over to Dr. Madhusandam. Thank you so much, Dr. Tiyar. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Vandana, ma'am. Uh, uh, before we conclude, uh, I uh, invite uh, Professor Aluwale, sir, to intervene and uh, give his remarks. Uh, Professor Aluwale, sir. Hello. Uh, very good evening. And uh, uh, I think it has been another wonderful program which has happened in the month of April and May. Uh, one thing which is very evident in this program is that if you have uh, programs which are of interest to our community, they really accept these very enthusiastically. I will agree with uh, Ma'am Vandana that uh, the attendance was a very good indicator of the interest shown by the uh, participants. But I think uh, mm, this is because of the hard work which has been put up by the resource persons. Uh, 
And it was not like this that uh, we gathered from here and there the resource persons. They sat down, designed the program, and then came out with uh, these series of uh, presentations. There is one thing more which I believe uh, the uh, teachers and the participants, student participants must have uh, realized that the algebra of uh, doing these transformations is very simple. It's not very difficult. Uh, but as we always say, uh, physics, when it comes in between, it really uh, gives very interesting interpretations to the transformations uh, which happen. And that was evident in all the uh, lectures which we heard. I'm really impressed by Dr. Rajiv Tyagi a lot. And the reason for that is that uh, he's an enthusiastic uh, teacher and loves to, you know, convey uh, what he has actually understood in a beautiful manner. Uh, hats off to you, Dr. Rajiv Tyagi. I think thank we you are. So much. Thank you so much. Very, very sweet new... compliment. Very sweet compliment. Uh, sir. Thank you so much. We have found a new, another very competent uh, member of the IEPT. And we look forward to very many future uh, interactions uh, through you and through your school also, sir. Because now we don't only see you here, we also see your institution here, which uh, uh, has provided you space uh, for, uh, you know, be, being creative uh, apart from your administrative uh, duties also. So you are now our role model also. In fact, uh, each of the speakers in this particular program were excellent. I I can't emphasize more than this. And uh, I know Vandana Ji since uh, my uh, meeting in Goa, and we know that how she plans the things. We have together also done programs. And uh, this is again another, uh, you know, uh, opportunity which was uh, created by Vandana Ji with the inspiration of uh, our very young spirited Professor Kulkarni. I mean, I, he's an amazing person. Uh, he is an amazing motivator. He is very tough also. You must <laughs> realize this. But I think his intentions are so good. That is what ultimately matters. And uh, we are not going to stop here. I think we will continue with these things in future also. This is a series and it must continue. We should keep on evolving. And this is a kind of an evolution which is happening in IAPT these days. Uh, we are coming out with certain programs in which we are trying to be uh, very, very self-reliant through the members of the IAPT itself. So this is a great uh, time great vision and uh, I missed actually two lectures in between because I was traveling all through and uh, uh, I uh, can see K Kiranji's I, I didn't met him or her I don't know and uh, uh, Jyoti she was just great and uh, you know they the members who participated as resource persons in this, they are spread throughout the country. That is also one very good part of the presence of the IAPT in the country. So for me as president, it is very satisfying uh, when uh, our members uh, come forward. I think they can do wonders. Uh, tomorrow is the valedictory uh, and uh, I hope I will be able to join, though I am traveling again tomorrow. Uh, but I would love to be there uh, a, with you. And I will repeat my request once again. Vandana ji and Rajiv ji, Jyoti, ka, uh, Jyoti ji and Kiran ji uh, and Professor Kulkarni. I think it is high time 
that we convert these set of lectures into a small booklet uh, by the name of this uh, program itself, which was a wonderful name. I think it was very inviting uh, name. Uh, Professor Abha is uh, just uh, great. I think she is proving the fact that she has uh, the genes of uh, Professor D.B. Khandelwa, the way she works. And uh, uh, every time she writes or intervenes anywhere, I think she is more in love of physics than with computer science. <laughs> Fortunately, this program was a uh, superposition of these two fields in a very interesting fashion. So thank you, Abhaji. Uh, your Vidharva Sabharsi is also doing very well. It's very pleasing to note that. Uh, I must also thank uh, today our uh, beloved uh, host, Madhu Sudanji and uh, Professor Rao. Uh, they are very, very kind uh, uh, persons, fully interested in the well-being of physics community and improving the quality of education. I think uh, only one uh, call was enough to bring them on the table and make these, not only this program, but an earlier program on quantum mechanics uh, also happen. We uh, must not also uh, uh, forget very many uh, interesting things which are uh, happening because of the participants. I have uh, Dr. Uh, uh, R. Balakrishna ji. Uh, let me tell you that I have a very uh, old, uh, what you call, friendship with him. We were together in 80s, 1980s, uh, in the last uh, part of uh, that decade in Jaipur. And we did a refresher course. And uh, thank you, Professor Balakrishnan, for being with us in this program. This is uh, just uh, great. And then uh, uh, Dhanil was a wonderful addition to take care of uh, very many things which have happened. And uh, Dhanil, your presence also has lent a lot of uh, uh, what you can call... Uh, strength to this particular program and we feel that you will keep on joining us with the various other programs also uh, so once again i thank each one of you i may have missed somebody's name thank you dear participants you spent so much time with us wonderfully there were so many quizzes which were given it was a real uh, actually i would call it as a truly a certificate program of uh, two weeks, not less than that. It is in the spirit of what national education policy is talking these days. And uh, if I look at the number of hours which have been spent, uh, the number of hours spent are, including tomorrow, it will be a 15 hours program. And 15 hours program actually is a one credit course, which is equivalent to a certificate course. I'm doing all those calculations for you to tell you that how good you have been in participating in this particular program. So congratulations. Uh, tomorrow, share your thoughts with us. And uh, you know, you are our thermometer also, which tells us that uh, whether the uh, things are properly cooking or not cooking, are we reaching the right kind of a temperature or not? Thank you. Thank you, Vandana ji and uh, Madhusudan ji and uh, Professor Rao, Professor Kulkani ji, Abha ji, Jyoti and Dhanil and uh, Professor Tyagi. Reshma. Uh, Reshma. Reshma ji. Uh, yeah, Reshma ji is also there in this program. Hello, Reshma. 
uh so that's so she wonderful. has been she has uh, helped us enormously and she has a team of volunteers also here and uh, i think uh, we can't thank her enough for all the involvement and all the support she has provided hello, so sir. thank you so much to dr reshma also hello sir you know ma'am uh, ma'am vandana reshma did a wonderful regional convention at goa in which i participated and yes. uh, i think uh, we are finding some young now people who can really do wonders in iept and they they mean business that's the best part of it reshma yes. showed that uh, it is fully evident in uh, goa itself so thank you reshma <laughs> thank you sir and well thank done you. thank you sir okay <laughs> thanks uh <laughs> thank you sir for your encouragement uh, for all all of us in organizing these many programs uh with these few words uh, i would like to sum up today's session i thank uh, today's <coughs> uh, today's speaker or today's uh, to call uh, presenter dr rajiv tyagi sir uh, thank you sir for your, your wonderful and elaborate you talk and uh, i also appreciate dr vandana ma'am for uh, holding this session in a skillful manner i thank all the participants for their active engagement throughout the session and uh, this is uh, <coughs> goodbye for today tomorrow we'll be having the last session and also the validity so i think uh, uh, i request few participants to give their feedback during the validity session the schedule of the validity will be posted in the whatsapp group let us follow the schedule accordingly i also request halwale uh, sir again to be there tomorrow uh, during the validity session with this a few words uh, i am ending the session here and uh, we'll meet tomorrow for the final session and also in the validity program tomorrow thank you one and all see you tomorrow thank you i'll try my level best i am traveling but still i'll try my level best yes sir please try to be there okay thank you thank you good night all see you tomorrow